When you start streaming, and especially before you start making money from it, spending $130, $150, up to $200 on a USB mic just seems out of the question. And even if you do get a top of the line USB microphone, the audio quality is always going to be limited. And that is because regardless of USB mic, your computer is going to have to convert that analog signal from the microphone into a digital one that you can process, which introduces latency on top of the fact that pretty much every USB cable is unbalanced which means that inherently there is going to be some level of interference by way of unwanted frequencies in the signal once you encode the audio in your streaming software and then once switch compresses that audio to push out to your viewers spending 200 dollars on a usb mic seems pretty bad so why would you pay that much the answer you don't have to when Fine Fine reached out to me about their new Amplicate microphone, I was stoked! I checked them out, and it's a very affordable plug-and-play USB microphone that still makes you feel like a streamer. And by that, I mean this thing looks great. I also asked if I could check out the K658 podcast mic, so I've got this bad boy right here. Man, this thing also just looks stunning i use an sm7b normally and so i am a huge fan of this silhouette links to both of these products will be in the description below the ampli game at time of posting is like 39.99 right now and this guy the k658 is 109.99 but you're definitely gonna want to watch this review for some important differences before making any decisions between these two mics now before we get into unboxing these things let's talk about the fine fine experience first of all working with fine fine has been an absolute pleasure eve thank you for everything you've done and for introducing me to these awesome mics spoiler the ampli game is my new playstation mic i also want to say this is a review not a sponsorship the products were provided to me by fine fine but i am not getting paid to say anything this video is purely a compilation of my thoughts based on my experience that i had while using these mics time to unbox these things looking at the ampli game we'll first see the user manual up at the top of the box pretty standard Next, we have the USB-C to USB-A cable with the cable management strap, pretty nice. Underneath some more foam, we have the mic itself. Looking pretty nice. It comes pre-installed on the shock mount with the pop filter. It's got the nice little smiley face on it. I think it's pretty cute. You can see the USB-C on the back there. We have the gain knob on the bottom and you can see where you can attach it to your stand or your boom arm. And yeah, this is the shock mount. Pretty cool that they include this. Uh, these essentially just eliminate vibrations from your environment like if you were to knock your desk so pretty cool little addition and this is the stand so you can just of course screw the mic onto this bad boy and set it up for easy use next up we have the k658 podcast mic this comes in a premium sleeved box underneath the lid we have the manual followed by that amazing USB-C to USB-A cable that is six foot long. The same stand that came in the Ampli game. This mic does include the 3 8 of 5 8 threaded adapter for your boom arms. I wish they would put that in the Ampli game. The shock mount is separate for this guy. Insulation, you just kind of thread the mic through the shock mount and then there's a little screw that you can put on there. It's pretty easy. But yeah, again, very cool if there's a shock mount. This should, at the very least, eliminate some vibrations that you may cause. And here is the mic, baby. Look at that. Oh, man. That is a nice looking mic. We got the gain knob and the mute right there on the top. The IO is on the bottom with the USB-C and the headphone out. And you can see that's where you kind of thread it into the shock mount. But yeah, these are the complete package. You should have basically everything you need coming out of the box. Pretty nice. Now, it's important to note that these are two different types of microphones. The Ampli game is a condenser mic, something like a Blue Yeti, which benefits from placing the mic about five inches from your face while facing the mic at side address. So this means the mic is is gonna be vertical whether like this or if you have from a mic arm upside down and you're gonna want to be talking directly in to the side of the mic perpendicular to the grill it's pretty obvious where you want to talk but i have to say this because mic placement is very important so like with the k658 and like with this mic right here my sure any of these like dynamic style microphones with the deep cavities capsules you want to speak into the mic so you don't want to speak like this into the mic you want it to be within five inches and you want to be stalking directly down into the mic and that's that's gonna make a huge 
huge difference in how these mics sound, guys. All right, so actually using the mics, whenever I plugged both of these things in, they were immediately recognized in Windows, OBS, Audacity, and on my PlayStation 5. This made setting them up a breeze because I could just select them from my audio device options like I would literally anything else. Way to go, fine, fine. Works great. After getting these mics plugged in and set up, I immediately took them on a stream and used them live to see how we could get them going in a live environment. I was personally pleased with the performance of these mics. And even after switching from my GoXLR slash Shure SMB setup, the quality and audio for this level of mic was strikingly adequate. The SM7B is legendarily, is that a word? One of the cleanest mics you can get. So I thought the challenge was unfair. These fine, fine mics definitely held their own. And I don't think the difference in quality is jarring by any means. Here are some excerpts from the stream. Yo, all these jams, let's go, Cinder. Glad you are enjoying the music. But yeah, if you ever wanna listen to some good music, the, the Katamari soundtrack is pretty dope. This is, this is just a stream beat song. I just, I don't know. I. I guess I don't care that much about cosmetics. Like, if I had to pay for it, I'll just, like, live without it. I don't even think the cosmetics and Halo are that cool. I really don't. I think all the armor looks like doo-doo. Guys, is the mic still okay? Like, is it, like, is it holding up all right? Like, does it sound, how's the quality, like? For those of you who came in, did you even know we were using a new mic? Shiny Sunday, wake up in the late afternoon. Turn on my gains, about to start real soon. Head to the kitchen, put some toast in the toaster. Take a quick pee and put coffee in the roaster. I asked throughout the stream how the audio sounded, if it was subpar. And each time, everybody hanging out said that it was great. In terms of viewer feedback, which realistically should be the most important, these mics are awesome. Now I want to go ahead and break down each of these mics individually before we do a sound test through audacity which eliminates that live stream encoding and compression process so we should get a cleaner signal between the three so the ampligate microphone is a fun little package guys in terms of connectivity you have the single usb-c input it's usb-a output so the cable is usb-a or usb-c to usb-a which by the way the cables are awesome. Six foot USB-C cables, yes please. So on the top of the mic, there is a capacitive mute area. So you see whenever it's muted, the RGB turns off and it's capacitive, not tactile, which means it's basically just touch sensitive. It works as expected, it feels great. Only thing I would say about this is the area is pretty small. So it looks like the whole thing would be like a mute button, but really, Like, you have to be kind of dead center. So I would say maybe expand the effective area. Just because sometimes I would think I'm muting it, but I didn't. You have to be pretty accurate with that. In terms of the function, it works great. So on the bottom, there's a simple gain knob. You know, up, down. That's volume level for you. Fine Fine recommends keeping it under 60% to avoid distortion. I personally barely had to turn it up at all. Your mileage is probably going to vary depending on how you have things set up like noise floors limiters things like that in your obs it does come with the stand and the pop filter so everything you need is right out of the box i use it on my boom arm right here it felt great one thing i might say is i wish they included the 5 8 to 3 8 threaded adapter for the boom arm with the ampli game they do include it with the k658 because they do recommend using that model on a boom arm but they said the ampli game works fine on the stand so i assume that's why they didn't include it they're just a couple bucks anyway but it just would be nice honestly your stand might come with one as well your your mic arm might come with one as well there's also rgb you might have noticed talked about it for the mute looks pretty cool it's not addressable this is what it looks like uh, you can't, like, pick purple and make this mic purple. At least, Eve, if I've messed up, please let me know. I did not see where that was adjustable. Adjustable, so. Uh, but it's a cool gradient. It's not too, it's not too, like, over the top. It's nice and slow. You're not gonna be, like, giving people seizures during the stream. Uh, it's, it's a nice, like, kind of like a breathing rate radiant. And I honestly just think it looks pretty cool myself. I think, I, like, you've seen that on other types of mics. Uh, I think that that placement of the RGB is pretty sick. <laughs> Looking at the K658 Dynamic Podcast mic, we'll see the same basic controls, but in a way where they're more accessible to you. You have the gain knob right here on the top, and this is the capacitive mute button. So they're kind of together. Uh, really, the big difference is the gain knob. You don't have to, like, look under the mic to see where it's at. Pretty nice. Good little touch. The lights on the back, you can shut them off with uh, this button right here. 
Also, a capacitive button, not tactile. It doesn't click. Just like a touch-sensitive button. Some people love the RGB, but if you're in a more professional studio, you can turn them off, and it looks like just any other mic that would belong in any other studio. Pretty cool little touch that they added for the podcast mic. On the bottom of the mic, next to the USB-C, you will notice there's a headphone output. So you can monitor your voice through this mic, just like you would expect from any product with the name podcast on it. So the big reason why I chose the Ampli game over this as my PlayStation mic is, and I want to preface this by saying, I this is a Sony problem. I don't think this is Fine Fine's problem. This is a limitation in the PlayStation OS. But because of this monitoring functionality, my PlayStation would not let me separate this microphone between an input and an output. So when, as soon as I plugged it in, the PlayStation recognized it as both my new input and output, kind of like a headset. I know you can go into the PlayStation settings and manually set your thing, but it would not let me do that. It would always default back to either if I were to change the output, it would change my input to the default mic on the controller. Or if I were to change my input to this mic, it would change my output to this mic. Uh, like I said, not fine finds problem. It is just, if you are planning to use one of these mics for your console, I would definitely go Ampli Game for console use. In terms of the build quality of the mics, the Ampli Game itself is, as far as I can tell, all plastic. The stand is not, there's some sort of metal, but everything about the mic itself is plastic. It's super lightweight, but it doesn't feel cheap. It feels tight. Everything feels like it fits. There's no, like, loose glue or adhesive everything looks clean it looks like it's very well put together and i've honestly dropped this thing a lot off of this desk i have a lot of stuff and it works great and the k658 it feels like it has an aluminum shell aluminum casing around here which is nice but it's still very very light if you're gonna be using a hydraulic based boom arm like my uh blue compass here uh you're gonna have to add some extra tension i mean that's not a knock against the mic it's really just the it's just light um so there's spring-based arms that i would say work better for these but again the k658 is solid there's no jiggles there's no loose adhesive the screen fits on great the shock mounts are are tight the screws fit great yeah the stand comes with it as well yeah everything feels and looks looks high quality and and seems high quality and, and works high quality i would say now let's check out these mics through the audacity audio program did you know we stream every night at twitch.tv precision we're also active over on tiktok and twitter and here on youtube so if you drop a subscription or a follow to any of those channels that would be really appreciated did you know I stream six nights a week at twitch.tv slash precision? We're also active over on TikTok and Twitter and here on YouTube. So if you drop a subscription or follow one of those channels, that would really be appreciated. Did you know we stream six nights a week over at twitch.tv slash precision? We're also active on TikTok and Twitter and here on YouTube. So if you want to drop a subscription or follow on any one of those channels, that would be really appreciated. All right, so some final thoughts. I think these fine, fine mics can hold up to any USB mic in terms of audio quality, especially for the price point. You may be thinking that other mics like the Elgato Wave come with additional features like a software, but you can download the Wavelink software directly from the Elgato website. I'll have the link down below. Or literally any other free mixer. And these mics get registered just like any other device. And I'll actually show you a picture of that right here. This is the Wave software. The fine, fine shows up and can be controlled in it. I really do enjoy the way these fine, fine mics look, sound, and function. If you're looking to start streaming or you just need to upgrade your mic game, I would definitely say consider giving fine, fine a shot. Links to both of these products, again, are in the description. Fine, fine. Thank you again for the pleasure of reviewing these microphones. I stream six nights a week over on twitch.tv slash precision. If you want to come hang out with us, if you want to talk to me about stream audio, ask me any questions. Let me know what your setup is. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for more content. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That helps a ton. I hope you all had a happy new year and I'll see you guys in the next one.